In this video, the learning intention is that we will understand Le Chatelier's principle and how equilibriums shift to counteract a disturbance. So in this video, I'm going to show you some real examples, um, real experiments to help you understand these concepts. If you watch to the end, I'm also going to demonstrate my favorite equilibrium reaction for you. So once a chemical reaction reaches equilibrium, what happens when it's disturbed and how can we disturb it? Well, just like in biology, how a system will work to reach homeostasis, in chemistry, a chemical system will work to restore equilibrium again. Le Chatelier's principle, hopefully I haven't butchered his name, um, states that if a dynamic equilibrium is disturbed, then the equilibrium will shift in order to accommodate the stress placed on the system and re-establish equilibrium. This means that the equilibrium shifts towards the direction that will minimize or counteract the effect of that disturbance. So there's three ways in which an equilibrium can be disturbed. The first one is a changing in pressure or volume. The second, a change in temperature. And the third, a change in concentration of the reactants or products. So let's start with the changing in pressure or volume. So effectively, if we increase the pressure on a system, then we are decreasing the volume and vice versa. This is only relevant for reactions that involve gases in either the reactants or the products or both. Increasing the pressure or decreasing the volume shifts the equilibrium to the side where there are less moles of gas. Decreasing the pressure or increasing the volume shifts the equilibrium to the side with more moles of gas. Consider the following reaction. Here we have nitrogen dioxide gas reacting with itself to form dinitrogen tetroxide. By increasing the pressure on the system, this will cause the equilibrium to shift towards the right. This is to decrease the amount of pressure by decreasing the amount of gas. So look at the left hand side of the equation. The left hand side has two moles of gas, while the right hand side only has one mole of gas. So if the pressure has been increased, then the equilibrium is shifting to the right hand side because there are less moles of gas. So the system is trying to use up the gas by reverting to the forward direction or the forward reaction. So let's watch this happen in real life. So in this syringe, I have this system. So I have the system where we've got nitrogen dioxide and dinitrogen tetroxide in an equilibrium. It's a dynamic equilibrium. We have the forward and reverse reactions happening at the same rate. And you can see that there are no changes in the macroscopic properties of this system. The color is remaining constant, but we're going to change that now. Okay, so the nitrogen dioxide is a brown gas and the dinitrogen tetroxide is a colorless gas. If I decrease the volume by closing up the syringe, therefore I'm increasing the pressure on the system, we would expect to see a shift in the equilibrium towards the right hand side where there are less moles of gas. So if that's happening, we would also expect to see the color of the system decrease because we're seeing less nitrogen dioxide in the system and the creation of more of the dinitrogen tetroxide, which is the colorless gas. Now let's see what happens if we do the reverse of this. So this time we're going to decrease the pressure by increasing the volume. Now we would expect the equilibrium to shift the other way. We expect it to shift towards the left, so the reverse reaction, and create more of the nitrogen dioxide. Since the nitrogen dioxide is the brown gas, we expect the color to go darker. We would expect it more of that nitrogen dioxide gas to be created, to be produced. So let's look at changing the temperature of a system. Now this depends on whether the forward reaction is endothermic or exothermic. So remember that endothermic reaction is one in which the heat energy is absorbed because the amount of energy required to break the bonds is more than the amount of energy released when new bonds are made. An exothermic reaction is one in which heat energy is released. 
This is because the amount of energy required to break the bonds is less than the amount of energy released when new bonds are made. So increasing temperature of a system favours the endothermic reaction and decreasing the temperature in a system favours the exothermic reaction. And I'll show you why. So consider the following reactions. If a reaction is exothermic, then for the purpose of determining the effects on equilibrium, we can consider that the heat is a product of the reaction. And so we can actually write that on the end of our equation like this. If a reaction is endothermic, then we can consider heat energy as a reactant and we can write it in our chemical equation like this. This helps us to visualize why changing the temperature of a system causes an equilibrium shift. So let's look at some actual examples. Here we have the same reaction as before, nitrogen dioxide to dinitrogen tetroxide. The forward reaction as shown is exothermic, meaning it releases the heat energy. And so we can write heat on the right hand side as a product. Let's look at the real experiment. So here I have three vials, all of the same amount of nitrogen dioxide gas, and all three have reached equilibrium. We can see this by the stable colour, and that the, the colour is the same across all three vials. I'm going to put one of these in a hot water bath to increase the temperature on the system, and I'm going to put one in a cold water bath to decrease the temperature of the system. And I'm going to put one in a room temperature one, just so that we can compare them later. So let's start by increasing the temperature. If we increase the temperature, what do we, would we expect to see? Well, if we're adding heat, then the equilibrium is going to shift to counteract the addition of the heat. So in this case, the equilibrium should shift to the left. Therefore, we expect there to be the creation of more nitrogen dioxide. And since this is the brown gas, we expect the color to get darker. So let's have a look and see if that happened. Yeah, it did. The increase in temperature caused the production of more nitrogen dioxide by shifting to the left. Now let's compare that with the cold water bath. By removing heat, we expect the system to shift to the right in order to increase the temperature of the system to counteract that disturbance. Since the forward reaction creates a colorless gas, we would expect there to be a decrease in color of the test tube of the vial. And here we see that to be true. So on the left, we can see that this one is the one with the increased temperature. So it shifted to the left. On the right, we can see the decrease in temperature. It shifted to the right. And in the middle there, we can see our room temperature one just for comparison. Here's another example. So this one is using the reaction between cobalt chloride and hydrochloric acid. This reaction is endothermic in the forward direction. So if we put this system in a hot water bath to increase its temperature, the system is going to shift to the right to try and use up the heat. And we would expect to see the color turn blue. If we put the system in a cold water bath to decrease the temperature, the system is going to shift to the left to try and gain more heat. This is going to turn it pink. Now let's look at what happens to an equilibrium reaction when we change the concentration. If the concentration of either a reactant or a product in the system is increased, then the equilibrium will shift in order to minimize that disturbance. If the concentration of a reactant is increased in the system, then it is going to shift towards the product in order to use up that added reactant. If the concentration of a product is increased, then the system will shift towards the reactant in order to use up the added product. For example, in this reaction, increasing A causes the position of equilibrium to shift towards the right, towards the products. The system can also be disturbed by decreasing the concentration. So in this, in this example, if we decrease the concentration of B, then this causes the position of equilibrium to shift to the left to try and make more of B. Let's look at an actual example. Here we have a chemical reaction between cobalt chloride and hydrochloric acid. If we add water to this system, then the equilibrium shifts to the left. The water causes the dilution or decrease in concentration of the hydrated cobalt ions. 
and so the equilibrium shifts to the left to reduce this stress, while also using up the excess water that was added to the system. Since the hydrated cobalt ions are pink, we see this color change in the system. All right, now it's time for my favorite demonstration. This one is called the traffic light demonstration. It's a fun demonstration for equilibrium and it's called the traffic lights because we see um, three different color changes uh, as equilibrium is established and disturbed. So what we will observe is that the equilibrium will be disturbed when we shake the system. Now, why would shaking the system disturb the equilibrium? It's because when we shake it, it actually causes more oxygen to be dissolved into the solution. And so it's changing that concentration. So that's what we're seeing here, a change in concentration of the oxygen. Now this reaction is a oxidization reaction. So if a little bit of oxygen is dissolved, it's gonna change color from yellow to red. Then if we dissolve more of it, we shake it even further, we see another oxidation reaction and it turns it to green or blue. If we then let the system sit and that oxygen is released back out of the solution, then it will re-establish equilibrium and we will see it go through the color changes again, back through red and down to yellow again. I hope this video has helped you to understand Le Chatelier's principle um, by seeing the way that equilibrium reactions can be disturbed in real life examples and how they come back to form a new type of equilibrium.